During 2014, the domestic cat killed 25 million birds and small animals on the Cape Peninsula alone. It's quite, it's quite disturbing. That really does amaze me. I, I didn't know that they would kill that much. 25 million little animals. That is a huge amount of killing. We know more about leopards, we know more, more about baboons, we know more about sharks, which are highly dangerous and very difficult animals to study. We know more about them than the cat in our own living room. Uh, we don't know how many of those small mammals, birds, amphibians, scorpions, reptiles, um, fish, bats, the, 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 the list is actually endless, what the actual impact uh, is. It appears that the common kitty cat is one of the most efficient hunters on our planet. Domestic cats number about 600 million globally, making it the world's number one pet. And they are born hunters, stalking from just four to six weeks old and pouncing on anything that moves. We're talking about a density of a predatory animal of between 150 cats to 300 cats per square kilometer within Greater Cape Town, which is where our studies uh, have taken place. In 2013, UCT master's student Frances Morling began a study on cats in Cape Town. And there have been a couple of studies recently that have found that cats actually bring home only a very small proportion of what they catch. So a lot of it is, is eaten or just left on the site where it's killed. So I want to try and find out, I want to try and get a measure of what proportion of what's caught is brought home. The study cats were all sterilized active hunters between one and seven years old. They were fitted with kitty cams to film their daily hunting expeditions. All right, so this is the kitty cam that we're going to use. Um, you can see the little lights here. Those are infrared lights, so those mean that we can film in the darkness as well. So we'll just pop this on his, on his neck. And that's an emergency release collar, so if, that, if he gets stuck on something, that'll pop off. Frances needed 14 cats and their owners across the Cape Peninsula as volunteers for her study. My study was completely based on, on help from my fantastic group of volunteers, so I was really just coordinating that effort. The volunteers collected the footage on a daily basis. Sometimes the cameras didn't work when we wanted them to work. Uh, we sometimes had cameras covered in blood, and we thought that, oh, wow, we've managed to capture a really good kill. <laughs> Frances's death tally of 25 million small animals is disturbing and it is therefore not surprising to learn that cats have eliminated entire species in the past. It's been documented before, particularly on islands where animals are completely, they're not used to prey by cats, so they're very vulnerable to um, being completely taken out. In 1949, South Africa opened its weather station on Marion Island. Ships traveling to Marion introduced mice to the island, so the first relief team brought two cats to control the rodents. With time, the cats were banished from the weather station and quickly adapted to the harsh conditions. By 1975, 2,100 cats were destroying 455,000 birds per year. By 1987, there were about 35,000 cats on Marion Island. The diving petrel was totally eliminated. The whale petrel, downy petrel, white-chinned petrel, blue petrel, and gray petrel were almost totally eliminated from the 290 square kilometer island. Various methods were used to control the cat numbers, from trapping the cats to introducing cat flu. Nothing worked. Then, in 1986, hunting teams arrived to methodically cull them. Today, nearly 30 years later, Marion Island is cat-free, but now rats have become a major threat to the island's birds. This shows just how cats can impact fragile ecosystems, and that man's intervention does not always solve the problem. One case uh, where we know an extinction occurred uh, pretty much due to the lighthouse keeper's cat was on, a, on an island called Stephen Island where the lighthouse keeper's cat was actually catching the flightless birds called the Stephen Island wren 
that and other factors caused the extinction of that particular species because it was only found on that island. These examples illustrate how important it is to know what our cats are killing. Once the kitty cams were deployed, Frances had to wait three weeks to collect her data. The cats were certainly not idle, and some intriguing footage was recorded. One of my favorite uh, pieces of footage was I'd, I'd been analyzing footage for hours, and I was, my eyes were getting a bit tired, and I, I was watching a cat at nighttime, and all of a sudden this porcupine just enters the shot, and it just walks past the cat, and they kind of look at each other, and, and then they go, oh, well, not very interesting, and move off again. And they just completely ignore each other after that. So the porcupine must be quite a frequent visitor to the garden. I found that really interesting. In viewing their cat's footage, the volunteers made several discoveries about their pet's secret worlds. Initially, wow, I felt like I was um, tripping <laughs> because it dangles on the cat's collar and so you have to kind of get it to that motion mode. And then we started to see how he would hunt birds and jump incredibly high. And then probably the best footage that we saw was when he actually encountered a snake just outside our front gate. And we didn't know that there were snakes around at all. And um, he actually went for this, it's just a mole snake, it's a very dark black mole snake. But um, that, was, that was very, very interesting. So it was hugely eye-opening. Of the 14 cats studied, one stood out above the rest, Junior, the ginger killer. This two-year-old cat was taken in by Claire Lindicky after he grew up in the bush close to her home. This may explain his prowess in the hunting department. He's the most proficient hunter of the study, definitely, by a long way. Probably by a factor of 10. He goes, we went for snakes and shrews and rats and mice and even tried for a bird, all sorts of things. Junior's kitty cam also showed that he shared his kills, like this mouse he shared with some kittens. While we were visiting Junior, he and his friend had a tennis match using a butterfly as a ball. That Junior is such a good hunter worried his owners, so they took steps to reduce the kills he made each day. We don't like it when he brings home birds and things. That's why he wears a bell. Two bells. <laughs> Once all the data was collected, Francis was able to interpret all the information. The main finding um, of my study was, the, was that um, cats only bring home less than a quarter of what they catch. So that was really interesting because there have been studies done all over the world that look at what cats catch, but they have primarily looked at what cats bring back to the home. And they use that as a measure of the total of what cats catch. So if they're now actually only bringing home a quarter, that means that they may be catching up to four times as much as we originally estimated. We estimate from my findings and through other studies in Cape Town that cats might be catching up to um, as many as 25 million prey animals a year. Around 11 million of these will be reptiles, so that's um, mostly geckos, sometimes snakes and lizards. Seven million of these will be invertebrates, so insects and spiders and things. Seven million will be small animals, so golden moles, shrews and that sort of thing. And around a million of them will be amphibians, which are mostly frogs. Domestic cats in an urban environment is not all bad news. They control unwanted rodent pests and alien bird species that threaten our indigenous fauna. Cats are also valued members of countless households. But if your conscience is plaguing you about the amount of little creatures that cats kill, there are ways to reduce the carnage. The simplest mitigation measure to, to try and limit your cat's predation is to just put a bell on your cat. So that's been shown to reduce your cat's, um, what your cat is able to catch by as much as half. Then there's the option to keep your cat inside all the time. They obviously need a certain amount of space, but you can definitely make a happy home for your cat indoors. There are people who are cat owners who are responsible. I think, I think that is slowly coming. And I would like to convince those who sit on the fence who are cat owners who don't really care perhaps about what the impact might be or don't think there is an impact, we want you to do something about that.
We don't want you to react negatively against us. We want you to think about that and say, yes, they've got some facts now. We know these cats, our cats are having this impact and we should be doing something about it.